Hi, I'm Will from Traffic Safety Store, and today I want to provide you with some valuable information on how to choose the right speed bump for your needs. To start, it's essential to clarify whether you are looking for a speed bump or a speed hump. While they may sound similar, there are key differences between the two that could significantly affect your decision. Let's also take a moment to understand the terminology we use to describe these products. First, we have height which refers to how high the bump extends above the surface of the pavement. Then there's width, which is the distance that the tire travels across the bump. Lastly is length, and that refers to how many traffic lanes the speed bump itself will cover. Now let's dive deeper into the distinctions between speed bumps and speed humps. Speed bumps typically stand between two and three inches tall and have a width of about 10 to 12 inches. On the other hand, speed humps are generally an inch and a half to two inches tall and 20 inches wide. The critical takeaway here is that speed bumps are taller and narrower than speed humps. This design makes speed bumps more jarring to vehicles, effectively compelling them to slow down significantly. As a guideline, speed bumps are ideal for reducing speeds to around five to 10 miles per hour, while speed humps are better for encouraging speeds of 10 to 20 miles per hour. Areas where speed bumps are beneficial include crosswalks, entrances to business, schools, churches, or any area where vehicles traveling faster than 10 miles per hour could pose a risk to pedestrians. Conversely, speed humps are often found in residential neighborhoods or in parking lots with lighter traffic, where they gently encourage the drivers to reduce their speed without bringing them to a complete stop. Once you've determined whether a speed bump or a speed hump is the right fit for your application, the next important factor to consider is the condition of the pavement. Is it perfectly flat or does it have a crown, meaning that the center is slightly higher than the edges? If your pavement is relatively flat, you might opt for a longer speed bump, which can be 8, 10, even 12 feet long, and cover multiple lanes with one installation. However, if your pavement is uneven, we recommend using shorter speed bumps and installing them end to end. This approach maintains functionality while preventing the bumps from trying to lift themselves off the pavement. Next, you'll need to decide on the material of your speed bump. The two primary options are recycled plastic and recycled rubber. Both materials are effective, so your choice may depend upon the aesthetic you prefer. If you want speed bumps that resemble traditional concrete structures, you might choose the recycled plastic option. These bumps come in various lengths and are dyed bright yellow for high visibility. Alternatively, if you prefer a black and yellow contrasting look, recycled rubber bumps may suit your needs. Made from ground used tires, these speed bumps come with yellow stripes already embedded in them at manufacturing. Rubber bumps are also excellent for uneven surfaces as they tend to sit firmly in place where you install them. It's crucial to remember that all speed bumps we offer, except for our portable model, need to be anchored to the ground. We provide various fasteners, meaning you don't have to worry about sourcing those on your own. The anchoring is essential to ensure that the speed bump remains securely in place. As you narrow down your choices, you'll also want to consider whether you need reflective elements for your nighttime visibility. Standard yellow plastic speed bumps are fine if visibility at night isn't your primary concern. However, if there's significant night traffic in the area, options are available with reflective yellow tape integrated into the design. Another consideration is whether to include end caps on your speed bumps. While speed bumps function effectively without end caps, the end caps provide a neat finished look and help prevent wear and tear on the edges of your speed bumps as vehicles pass over them. Lastly, we should also talk about the type of mounting hardware you'll need. If you're installing speed bumps on concrete, you really only have two options, lag bolts with expanding anchors or self-tapping concrete screws. Both of these choices require drilling, so a sturdy drill with a masonry bit will be necessary. For gravel or dirt surfaces, spikes are the only viable option, since expanding anchors won't hold in the dirt or the gravel. In asphalt, you have more choices. If the asphalt is older and is hardened, you could use expanding anchors. However, self-tapping concrete screws are not suitable for any asphalt installation, so it's better to avoid those. In summary, selecting the right speed bump involves several considerations, including the type of bump, the pavement surface, the material, visibility, and features, and anchoring method.
If you need assistance or have any questions about the options available, please don't hesitate to reach out to our knowledgeable team at Traffic Safety Store. We're here to help you with your speed bump needs to ensure the safest installation possible. Thank you for your time.